Monson Islam is playing. Why is it playing? Assalamu alaikum. We are back off the break. Um, we will be joined by our guest very shortly. Um, but until then, we will talk to Ridwan because that's the guest I've got currently in front of me. <laughs> um, so, Ridwan, in terms of work and what you're doing now, you're working for a rental company. So, you're out and about in the field, um, a key worker keeping Britain moving. Uh, so,. That. How how's that going for you in Ramadan? How's it going with lockdown? How's it going with everything? Alhamdulillah, happening? it's it's uh it's going good in terms of uh what 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 I'm doing. So I'm Alhamdulillah, I've been I've been blessed enough to be set in, in um a branch full of Muslims. So we're all experiencing uh, Ramadan. So there's all that understanding of what we're going through and so on. So uh, we've got that leeway. So that's what gave me the leeway for this show as well. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, but in terms of that, it, the vibes there as well. So we all we can all discuss, and we do have some topics of discussion as well when we're all in the branch. So it gets, it does get really interesting. So I've really enjoyed the aspect of working. Um, in terms of lockdown, um, I mean, Alhamdulillah, what my manager's done. I mean, say for example, if I weren't, I'm part of the radio show. He's he's given us a day where we can come a bit later. Alhamdulillah to himself because he's given us that just that bit of lying when when whenever we want. So uh, he's given us that leeway, which is good to be fair. But even if I wasn't, I mean, I was told by my area manager when it comes to Ramadan, just see if you can come up with some proposition in terms of working on Saturday and then coming later for the rest of the days. So uh, I mean, that was the proposition. So I think enterprise, I mean, the rental company I'm I'm working for, they uh, they have got that understanding. So there's a lot of diverse uh, diversity and inclusion in that. Um, it's been really good. I've really enjoyed enjoyed my time so far. I mean, obviously with the lockdown going on, you have to be wary of everything. I mean, at first my mom didn't want me to work, mm. as you can imagine. Mm. Of course, yeah. With this current situation, but alhamdulillah, we've been given the the, uh, the correct PPE equipment. So uh, in terms of that, I mean, obviously I'm not fortunate to work from home, but what can you do? Mm. But yeah, awesome. Um, well, we have got our guest on call right now. So salam alaikum, Sadiq. Can you hear us? Walaikum salam. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you, yes. Salam alaikum, bro. Good stuff, good stuff. Good salam alaikum, bro. So, Sadiq, in the studio, love, love you... Love having me on as well, man. Bro, uh, pleasure's all ours, bro. When we contacted uh, Mohammed from Hated Species, who's in charge of the Muslim network in the bank, he directed yeah. us to you because he's like, you know what, this guy, this guy's the guy you want. And we're like, yeah, Mate, let's go for it. Straight away, fam. <laughs> oh, alhamdulillah. Um, so, Sadiq, in the studio, you're joined by myself, Attic, you know, Ridwan, of course. Uh, and I've also got Shafi and Johan who also might be weighing in and asking questions and, you know, telling us about their experiences as well. Um, but before we go on to talk about the topic itself, uh, give us a little introduction about who you are, what you're doing. And uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, I, cool, man. Uh, as you guys mentioned, um, I work in a global bank. bank sorry, uh, I'm currently a digital product manager working in wealth. Um, I have just... I'm like near the end of my graduate scheme at the company. So joined after uni, um, on the side, I run a podcast and that's, that's really about it, man. Awesome. So you're a manager, um, in digital product. What, what's, what does that include? Digital product manager. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what it is, is every major bank will have digital products. So for example, um, if you want to invest via an app, uh, we're looking at how to, you know, optimize that that journey. So, for example, we're working on the app, we're working on how things look, um, how a customer really engages with their phone and banking, um, that kind of thing. Obviously, the team is massive. Some people will look after literally just um, sending payments, and my team look after the investment side of things. Mm -hmm. Is there a lot of um, technical stuff, uh, design work, and all of that? Is that what what's involved? So I'm, I'm, yeah, that is definitely what's involved. Mm -hmm. But I'm lucky because I manage the work. Right. So um, I make sure things are running smoothly. If there's a major decision that needs to be made with regard with regard to a design, that's when I'll get involved. But mm -hmm. luck, I, I can rely on the designers to do their work, the coders to do their work. And I'm just said as a like fixing the strategy. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm not a coder, definitely not. <laughs> oh, I thought you might be one of them creative guys. <laughs> um, so, 
with you, you're on your graduate scheme right now. And um, I imagine, uh, you know, I've not been on a graduate scheme. Ridwan is on one. And um, also speaking to Mohammed, we know uh, the bank you're working for. Um, mm. It's very active. It's very, you know, you're always doing things. Um, how how busy is it in your role uh, as you, as one of the graduate managers there? And what kind of, uh, what does your day kind of look like uh, currently in the situation? Are you working from home? Are you actually going into uh, headquarters? What's happening? No, no. So the headquarters have been closed. Um, I don't know if you guys saw in the news, but one of the early cases was in our head office in Canary Wharf. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that was completely cleared out. Um, a lot of people went to the tech office where I work, which is in London Bridge. Mm-hmm. Um, but soon after that was completely closed uh, and it has been closed for well over a month now. Um, so, yeah, I've been working from home. Um, it's because of the role that I do and a lot of it is just on your laptop, working, on calls. Nothing really changes in terms of the productivity sense. Obviously, you miss out on working with your colleagues, um, but but you can still do the work. Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm very blessed that I can still perform and, and, and you know, I'm not being furloughed, anything like that. I know that that's the situation uh, for loads of different people. I, I think I read a statistic that over a third of people have had their income reduced. Um, so, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm in a very, very fortunate position. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, but it's still busy. So, for example, today uh, I had a call at 8 a.m. Mm. Um, because we've got teams out in Hong Kong, we've got teams out in India. So, it, it, it's it's the usual grind, man. Yeah. At, at least I don't have to like wake up even earlier to get to the office. Oh, okay. yeah, so, yeah, that's true. Yeah, like, at, at least I, we I'll didn't wake you up I've today. Take, I've taken calls from bed. I've taken calls from bed, but. Um, yeah, you just use it for your advantage. Yeah. How are you finding uh, the change? Uh, I know with a, a job like yours, you might have worked at home before, but being mm-hmm. trapped at home, how are you finding the change? How, mm-hmm. Like Taking a phone call from bed, for example, is that changing how you perceive your bed? Has that become <laughs> your office? Do you know what? Um, it's tough be- to, to separate out work and life because currently, uh, say, say I've set up my office in the kitchen, uh, when I'm not in bed, I, I normally work in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, but after work, if I sit in the kitchen, I feel like I'm still at work. Yeah. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. Um, and there's no, there's no clear distinction sometimes. And You're not where, enjoying your you know, iftars or your sefries, are you? <laughs> Sorry? You're not enjoying your iftars or your sefries, then, are you? May, may, <laughs> You're may, going may. to the work canteen and you're like, oh, <laughs> I'm back here again. <laughs> it's, it's, it, yeah, it, that, that's the kind of thing where I'm, I'm struggling, especially because... I'm kind of being strict on myself. I'm not really leaving the house. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's yeah, it's no. that element of it is tough. Perfect. I think we'll d- what we'll do now, we'll just discuss uh, the basic things we want to speak about t- on today's show as well. So uh, you working in a corporate bank and uh, how it is dealing with it in during Ramadan. Uh, we want to talk about the diversity and inclusion because we've had some experience. So when I was in uni, actually, I was a part of the one of the societies and we had some dealings with the Muslim network there. So that's how we got the connections with uh, Mohammed and how we got the connection yeah, yeah. with you. So we just wanted to uh, discuss how, how he- your bank has been uh, catering for yourself in terms of Ramadan and yeah. even the, whole, the lockdown as well. So, I mean, how are you finding Ramadan in general, though? Uh, it's, it's completely different. Um, I, I think, you know, for me, the biggest difference is not anything to do with work. It's, you know, the, the masajid being closed mm. um, is, is a huge impact on just what Ramadan is all about. But alhamdulillah, we manage, we cope. Um, it, it, in terms of work, um, as, you, as you mentioned, you know, our Muslim network is quite active, right? Yeah. Um, Mohammed Bai, who's the head of it, uh, he's obviously based in Birmingham. I'm based in London. Mm. Um, but the lockdown's given us an opportunity to open our doors a bit bigger if that makes sense so right. for example if i'm running a muslim network event in london yeah only the people from london can can attend mm. however if i'm running a call anyone can attend a call oh of course um, okay sorry oh yeah yeah carry on yeah and no, i was agreeing <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Any, anyone anyone can attend a call so um what we've done is we've alhamdulillah it was my idea to run weekly sessions um kind of like khutbas during okay. Jummah, 
Um, we, we have half an hour calls every week on a Thursday um, and anyone can attend. So we send it out to all of the Muslim Network members. They forward it out to their colleagues, whatever. We've regularly had over 100 people attend Mashallah. and from all over the world. So, you know, people from India, people from South America, America, Canada, they're all attending this call. And it's kind of just opened our eyes a little bit to show maybe the Muslim community at work is massive and yeah. i'm sure it's the same case for any other major corporation as well so um if you're not doing that if you're involved in your muslim network so that's one thing getting involved um and then having these little ideas that just bring the muslim community a bit closer yeah because it, it, it doesn't happen automatically man mm. it has to happen from people that are engaged so you know how you say you know diversity and inclusion you know if there's no there's not really much diversity and inclusion in in the senior people at the bank of course um and they're not going to be the ones to say oh yeah we need to consider ramadan and we need to consider how it impacts our people mm. it has to be from the actual muslims to say it's ramadan this is going to impact us you guys need to think about this and we're going to show you guys how to think about it okay. that, that, that's that's kind of the perspective that people should have so do you know in terms of the muslim network were you encouraged by other muslims to join or is it something that was your own incentive to join like you, man, I was involved uh, in like the ISOC okay. uh, at my uni, and you know, I, w I went Queen Mary, man. So okay, yeah. that, that that Muslim community was was yeah, of course, yeah, good. It was it was solid. That um, Eastern and North, and, yeah, spice. And up. I wanted to yeah, I wanted to recreate that in at work. So I I knew like it was like first couple of weeks. I was like yeah, yeah let me get involved, uh, and I've just been doing bits here and there. But since I've kind of got my main role now um, as a manager, I've had a bit more stability so I can do a bit more. Of course, of course. Fair enough, man. Now, that's quite good to be fair in terms of uh, the inclusion in, in your bank specifically. I mean, a lot of other corporations can take influence from what you've been doing. Uh, in terms of that, um, so you're speaking about how you're doing the kutbas and so on. Uh, in terms of like Ramadan, I know you guys do like Ramadan meals and Eid meals. Is that something that would be considered on Zoom and, and other types of forms of uh, social social media and uh, networking? <laughs> no, no, no. So um, we've decided against that. Right. Um, what we do instead is we've, we're going to have like a fundraising day. Okay. Um, so all the, all the members of the bank and the, and the Muslim network, we're all trying to raise... First, we tried to raise for British Red Cross for the uh, COVID-19 response. Um, and as soon as Ramadan started, we are trying to raise for food packs in for Rohingya. Mm. Um, so we're kind of just trying to get together, do sessions where we're just explaining the cause. We're getting people from the charity to come in, uh, that kind of thing. I, I think for Iftar is because you're with your family now. Yeah. Um, I think it's best to stay, you know, remain with your family, be be active in the household as you are permanently there. Yeah, uh, I think that's probably the best. So, do you know with everything that's going on? So, you've got, you're doing a lot more with the Muslim network, but then you've got work as well. So, how are you balancing, mm. say, for Ramadan, doing your daily duties, and then helping around the house, mm. and then doing Muslim network, and then doing your actual uh, daily duties work? How how do you yeah. balance that? Yeah, G genuinely, man, it's, it just comes with discipline. It's for me to say. That sometimes I'm not managing it well. Sometimes I'm putting too much emphasis on um, work, for example, where mm. I'm not doing any other things. So currently I'm studying for the CFA uh, and the exam is in December. I need to make sure that I'm maintaining that. But right now I'm not doing as much as I should be. Right. Um, so it's all about just I think listing your, what, what is on your plate and how much time you believe certain things should require and then adding maybe an, an extra hour or two yeah um and from that comes a bit more discipline I, I think if you're just going ahead with everything blind you're just going to deal with whatever's next right yeah um but if you if you've got like a list and you've got what your priorities are you'll deal with them accordingly and like in a more planned assured manner of course uh, yeah. that's what i'm trying to do do you but feel like, like yeah, it's easier, easier said than done though? <laughs> yeah. Do you feel like with Ramadan you feel more productive? Because with myself, I feel like I do a lot more in Ramadan. I don't know if it's just the barakah of Ramadan, but or it's just yeah. you 
being awake a lot longer hours than usual. But I don't know for myself. I feel like I'm more productive. What about you? It's fun a lot. I think it is what you you said. There's there's more barakah in your time. Yeah. Um, your, you know, this is the one month that we really, really are conscious of Allah, mm. um, and in in almost everything we do, and and with that comes productivity. Of course. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. But yeah, no, I've, 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 I've asked the questions that I've wanted. I mean, and you've the lads got a question. Um, yeah. So, you currently, I don't know currently, but you do a lot of charity work, and I think that's that's something naturally that comes within you after you join the NISOC. And <laughs> alhamdulillah, you've carried it on um, through the Muslim network at work, and also through your own. Um, endeavors obviously without naming charities but um, are you currently doing charity work in Ramadan how's that faring out for you with work and balancing it all yeah 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 Um, obviously like this Ramadan is different so previous Ramadans you do bucket collections at at mosques or stuff like that obviously we can't do that right Um, and this is a time where we really need to take advantage of social media you know the the internet and everything within it um so fundraising platforms such as just give in there's a new app called mini deed as well which is amazing it's like you you make daily posts and a tap is is, is a like uh, so using these things uh it's how to still maintain some level of of, of fundraising some level of of charity mm-hmm. uh i am doing a so previous ramadan i used to do a tarawi tour and mm. I even went to Green Lane Masjid. Actually, I went. I went to. I went to Birmingham for one of them. Mashallah, you, you guys Allah. mentioned Coventry. <laughs> Is it Coventry Road? Yeah, Coventry Road. It's off Coventry Road. Yeah, Parawi. Mm-hmm. Um, it was oh, banging vibe. It's actually. a nice vibe, isn't it? It's, but I, it's, it's, I felt like I was yeah at, in Saudi. You know, <laughs> like, legit, legit. Um, so I need. I need to go there again, inshallah, uh, for for a Ramadan. Inshallah. Subhanallah. Um, do you know what? Yeah. Do you know what's great? This is the first time I've heard a Londoner actually praise Birmingham. No, it's not just London. No, 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 it's no, 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 everyone. Relax, 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 relax. Birmingham is still in the gutter. No, oh, oh, come on, man. Oh, I'm no, about no, to no. cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> yo, 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 yo. But um, that Coventry Road on the night of like uh, after Tarawih, banging, banging. Mashallah. Um, um, yeah, the aro- the aroma. Nah, <laughs> <laughs> Yo, as soon as we come off air, we're about to beef on Twitter. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, yeah, it's it's great. Um, and uh, also one other thing I want to touch upon. Um, obviously, man's been stalking you. I've I've been on your LinkedIn, okay. so I know I know I know what your roles are. But I've also <laughs> been on Twitter and social media and group chat. Um, it's a podcast that you're yeah. doing. And yeah. how how and I know you started it in March two thousand and eighteen, and then you yeah. know you, you stopped for a bit. Obviously, uh, you might have your own personal reasons why. And you've recently restarted it um, over Zoom, I yeah. believe, and over a new platform. Um, how are you finding time to juggle all this? You know, you've got your yeah. podcast, you've got work that you're still doing full time from seven o'clock in the morning, um, and then you've also got Ramadan. How's how are you juggling all of this? Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, say for that little shout out of the, of the podcast. Um, let me like just just quickly explain what it is. So it started off as a podcast um, about careers and how to help people after graduation um, that first step onto the career ladder. Um, and then it kind of like morphed into more of a Muslim lifestyle kind of podcast, um, similar to what you guys discussed here. Um, I know I was listening to bits of uh, yesterday's. Uh, session as well um, and now it's we've started it again we took a year break because I had to move out of London I was in Manchester I was in Leeds um, so now again settled down um, and it's, it's, it's again about that Muslim lifestyle we're doing a Ramadan lockdown series which is purely focused on Ramadan uh, and it's very very heavily orientated around the deen um, post Ramadan uh, it will still be you know a, a muslim lifestyle episode but uh sorry podcast but just a bit more broad so we'll talk about matters other than just purely ramadan or purely deen focused um mm-hmm. so inshallah everyone will enjoy that um and yeah balancing is if, you, if you're passionate about something man i, I think you, you'll make time in it um 
I, I, I commend anyone that does things that out of passion, they're not being paid for it, but they're just, they're just doing it because they believe that maybe they've got a set of skills or they believe that they're sharing something beneficial or they just enjoy it. Mm. Uh, and they just want to share that with, with the world. Um, and listen, man, small, small things, you know, even if you have 10 listeners, 20 listeners, 50 listeners, one or two people gaining something and maybe even changing their perspective for a day, a week, a year. Uh, that's that's massive, massive impact, man. Um, so inshallah, people people should do more of these kind of things. Inshallah. So you, it's, it, you're saying it's the passion behind your intentions behind it and why you're actually doing it. That's what's spurring you on to find yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think that's what spurred us on to wake up in the morning. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, uh, there you go, man. Sadiq, I've been following you on Twitter for some time now, and, and one thing that I found quite inter- inspirational, and uh, one thing I actually followed by the details of your videos was was actually your walk to to Paris, which I thought oh, yeah. was ex- was extreme but amazing at the same time. I mean, if you just <laughs> want to share share with the listeners what exactly you did and and what you raised and and uh, just just explain it, man. I, I thought it was amazing. I thought I wanted to share it with the listeners today. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Nah, so. But, okay. I'm the kind of person, right, where yeah. if I'm doing some fundraising, um, I don't like just asking for money. Yeah. I don't like just saying, oh, please donate to this link. Um, I, I want to be doing something. Yeah. Either I am um, saying that, oh, yeah, I'm going to actually visit the place, so please donate, or I'm doing a challenge. Um, so this, I needed to raise money um, because I wanted to go on a deployment to Jordan, Mm. help out with Syrian refugees. Uh, and I just had the idea, you know what? You know how the Syrian refugees, they had to walk or they had to get a truck ride or a boat ride to a different border. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, in, in really, really tough conditions. I wanted to recreate that. And what's the nearest border to where I'm from? You know, the Dover, yeah, walking yeah, to Dover yeah. and then get into Paris. Mm. Um, and yeah, so literally that was stuck in my mind. And then I started telling people about it. I was like, you know what? I, I feel like I'm going to just walk to France. Mad. And everyone was telling me, nah, nah, nah you, you <laughs> are crazy. Like, <laughs> that makes no sense. Do not do this. You're stupid, yeah? And it was around the times where it was getting dark at, like, six. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it weren't even summer. Mm. Um, and, yeah, like, everyone was telling me I'm nuts. I told my colleagues about it at work. They were saying, listen, you're crazy. Don't do it. <laughs> I remember my mum was sending me messages, obviously, because I was living away. She was sending me messages, messages like, please do not do this. Hella love hearts, like, I love you. Don't do this to yourself. <laughs> I'm like, listen, listen, listen. And I just kept, in my head, it just made sense. Like, I can do this. It's just walking, right? Mm. Um, so I managed to convince myself. And, and you know, my mum didn't agree, but she let me, she let me go. Uh, and on a Friday morning, at like 6 o'clock when I set out, I just started walking, man. Um, mm. And we stopped off at a place uh, called Faversham on on night one. Right. I stayed at a, br- a brother's house through Twitter. Like imagine I tweeted Marshall, out wow. my okay. route, and someone messaged me saying, "Oh, yo, I live in Faversham. Stay at mine." And obviously, me being me, was like, "Yo, let's go." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, yes, yeah, stayed up in Faversham. Imagine I was walking during like proper nighttime, pitch black, uh, certain areas that weren't well lit. Um, and then I was walking on the next day, walking to Dover, and this is where the weather just was intense, like strong, strong winds. They had to delay ferries. Imagine, and I was just walking in, walking through fields. Um, if you guys want to see it, just make sure, just follow me on Twitter. It's what's record. I'll tweet out about it. It's uh, definitely, did, did, yeah, hundred percent the craziest thing I've done. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, on the on Saturday night, I reached. Um, Calais, mm. and then on Sunday I got to Paris. Uh, but yeah, did you hella, did you walk did you walk on your Calais own, bro? Night, did you walk on your own? So yeah, that was a question man. from Johan. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah it's man. me, Johan. By the way, I'm just too mesmerized uh, by your story <laughs> to, to introduce myself. Honestly, even. watch the videos. I was so in, into it when I was watching. That must have been hella day. boring, man. On your ones as well. Nah, nah. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Please tell me you had some headphones at least, bro. Bro, 100% had some headphones on. <laughs> I was listening to some podcasts, uh, and I was just I was just marching. Wow. It became militant. Like honestly, 
adrenaline kicked in, <laughs> and and my calves have never been the same, bro. Really? Bro, <laughs> I've, Leg oh, day wow. never again. <laughs> they are defined. They're defined to this day. They are shaped. Hey, yo, let me talk to Zaf. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Zaf to listen back on this when we get it recorded. You know, I'm, I'm gonna be like, yo, I need to give it. I need to give him some tips, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so how many days did that take? Sorry, was it three days? Did you say? Three days, man. Three Must days. Be, days. Uh, me, Ridwan, and Shafi, we drove to uh, Paris from Birmingham. It took us a whole day. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yo, yeah. This guy's done it in three days. Yeah. Of walking. It's, un- it's honestly inspirational in terms of what you did. I mean, like, how, how many did you change up raising, by the way? Um, uh, bef- before you go to that, um, we're going to drum roll that figure in <laughs> after the break because we've got 30 seconds to the break. Um, we've also uh, had our cool. WhatsApp, uh, studio WhatsApp pop up. He walked to Paris. Question mark, question mark, respect. <laughs> uh, someone asked a really good show, the Better Together show is the only reason why I am awake. It's the ro- only reason why I'm awake, to be fair, <laughs> as well. Um, but yeah, uh, Sadik, we will speak to you as soon as we come back off the break. Uh, and after that, we, we can t- talk a bit more about. Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to the Better Together show, Ramadan Radio Wolverhampton 87.9 FM and a lot of you listening in online as well, if you want to get in touch with us, do uh, go on uh, on the website, click the WhatsApp button or WhatsApp text us on 0744-042-0432, if you have a chance uh, we'll, mm, well, we'll shout your messages out. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Basically, so we still have Sadiq on the phone, and before we went off on break, um, Johan asked him how much he raised by walking all the way to Paris, and I, I'm like, no, I'm not letting you say it now. I'm going to make everyone wait. Yeah. <laughs> so now's your time, Sadiq. Yeah, drum rolls. I, I'll play drum yeah, rolls, but I don't really, uh, you know, off calm and all of that. So. Well, we got we got acapella singer. Go on, go on, Joe. Do the drum roll. I just did the deadest drum roll. What's what's that? Like a dead machine gun. You might as well just tell us, bro. I ruined that moment for you. Alhamdulillah, uh, over the over the three days we raised uh, five and a half grand. Subhanallah, Allah, 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 man. That's Allah, wicked, man. Massive. Wow. So it was it was just it was just those like Rodwan was talking about. I used to post videos every like half an hour, <coughs> like oh I'm here now, I'm here now, uh, and people were just. Have you done like a vlog for it on YouTube? Have you? I do, I do, man. So that's what I'm saying. Follow me, uh, and I'll tweet about the vlog. Shout yourself out, bro. Okay, cool. I already followed you on Instagram, so. I need to yeah, just follow your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well shout yourself out for the listeners, bro, so yeah, they yeah, can yeah. keep up with your uh, all your content <laughs> as well. Yeah, so it's um what's real cool, uh, on both Twitter and Instagram. Perfect, bro. Perfect. So, it so I feel like a lot of people can take on from what uh, Sadiq has said in terms of mm. raising for charity because mm. you do see a lot of people raising charities by saying, "Oh, donate to this." You know what? I've I've certainly been inspired by his story yeah. I'm, because 100%. I'm currently raising money for for a cause, um, and I didn't really know how to go about it because I've never done it before. So the fact that he's gone up and done something crazy like that, mm. mashallah, and raised a you know, substantial amount of money, mashallah, mashallah. it's really motivated me and inspired me to go ahead and do something. Not probably as crazy as what he's done. <laughs> I'd probably like, like walk to, I don't know, like London or something. Nah, 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 nah. While, while we were on break, I'm going to bet you out, yeah? While we were on break, Johan actually proposed that he wants to go somewhere to another country. Oh, yeah. And inshallah, that's the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah inshallah. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Wales and Scotland, Scotland do not count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Outside of you, let, let, let's fly out to like France and then walk to Spain. Real talk, just that, do it, man. Yeah, that that would be be, that'd be that's a lot point. of landmass, that is, you know. <laughs> that is, <laughs> <laughs> that'd be pretty cool, though. Definitely. I probably do that. Actually, I'll probably land in Monaco or something. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, on WhatsApp, we are still getting messages. One of the messages we had, um, Sadiq was uh, earlier on. You said you went to Manchester and other co- other places last year. Um, they basically asked, "Oh, are you living on your own? I believe you're living with your family right now." Yeah, living with my family right yeah, now. Yeah, but, uh, um, but last year I was living alone. Okay, so how how was that part of Ramadan as well? Were you out during Ramadan? Nah, man, I, I was I was living alone during Ramadan in mm-hmm. Manchester. Oh, wow. Okay, and I was I'm guessing that's part of your graduate scheme that you had to travel around and do. Yeah. Yeah. And how how was that for you living alone, um, having having a job and uh, um, I know I know you know. A guy like you must have bare friends, yeah. But uh, <laughs> while while in Manchester, away from your you know London support system that you had of your boys and your friends that are around you, and having that lack of support system, how did you feel up there? How how did you cope? And how how was it? Um. So, yeah, I'm I'm the kind of person, man, where 
if I know one person, um, I'll make sure I know all of their friends kind of thing. Um, so when I was in Manchester, I knew one person. They brought me in uh, and I started just getting to know loads of different people. Uh, and they're amazing people. I miss them to this day that, you know, because of the lockdown, I haven't been able to visit. But alhamdulillah, I managed to recreate that kind of vibe. Obviously, it was not the same because family's down south. Um, but, you know, I had weekly football, um, motives, that kind of thing. Wimslow Road, if you know, you know. Um, and then, uh, but I think Ramadan was definitely tough because, you know, I'm not the best cook. Let's Let's be real, yeah? Uh, but cooking for myself, um, making making those tuna bakes and, and my chicken would never come out right. Um, that was tough. But then also, you know, just being with your family during Ramadan that, you know, during iftar when everyone's around the table, you've got your shawoy, you've got your you've got your boras, you've got your samosa mm. spring rolls. Mm. And it's, 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 it's just a proper nice vibe. Man's and talking it, to us about food at 10. Because, because of lockdown, because of lockdown. I've, I've been able to get that every single day, you know. Mm-hmm. Previous previous Ramadans, I might have been busy. Um, but here, I've really been able to just focus on just being with the family. Um, so it, it, it's a blessing in disguise, man. 100%, yeah. I mean, um, I've managed to... So I, I was in the charity sector two years ago where I was actually working um, for a humanitarian charity in Ramadan and I was out the house most of the time. I think I did about four iftars and about five, six suhoors at home. And mm. as much as I loved it, uh, the year after, I enjoyed myself at home so much because I missed my mum's cooking. I missed, my, you know, seeing my sister fast, um, you know, because she's still young and, you know, it motivates me. Like, Gosh, it's one of them ones where, you know, it's very rarely that you see a younger do something and you're meant to be the role model for them and this, that. But, you know, seeing that, I'm like, yo, you know, I, I didn't even fast at that age. I was doing half fasted at two fasted a day. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> But I wonder that that the family spirit is something that's great, and I, I think is that something that you're finding being at home, although it's boring and it's, it's mind numbing, and your kitchens become your workplace. Do you think that because you're still around family, you're still quite sane, and you know? Yeah, definitely, man. And, and not to say the family doesn't get annoying at times, mm-hmm. but uh, I've heard many people just... send death threats to the to their siblings. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, alhamdulillah, you, you know, just just that feeling um, and you know some people during this lockdown especially might be living alone uh, not being able to go out and and they definitely you know they don't have this blessing but for the people that do uh, make sure you take advantage of it you know make sure you're you're helping wherever you can if your mum needs something from the shops you're the first one to, to just react and go mm. um, you're helping out in the in the best way you can yeah, definitely. In terms of that, I mean, uh, are you? We we set ourselves a, uh, a challenge a couple about a week ago. That me and Rid Ridwan smiling because it was just just me and Ridwan yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, yeah. Uh, succeeded. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the challenge? What's the challenge? So the Brilliant. challenge was basically we're talking about how everyone's at home now, lockdown and so on, and the boys especially need to be helping their mothers out. So mm. I feel like yeah. I don't know. Do you? I, I've seen you cook a couple of times, isn't it? Like I said, I'm not a good cook, so don't be bored. Chef, yeah. No, no, you know what? As uh, you've tried it, so that's that's the main thing. That's the main <laughs> thing. So I feel like you can take part in this challenge as well, because obviously you, your social media presence onto it is good as well. So interact with us, and we'll show the listeners what uh, what, we, what we can cook. Say no more. I'm yeah, done. is that something <laughs> we can do? Yeah, come definitely, on, man. Definitely, inshallah, man. But yeah, no, it was, it's, uh, it was a very good chat, I mean, to be fair. So yeah. have you got any questions for us, to be fair, though, uh, Sadiq? Sad- Sad- I mean, so what? You do this every two days a week. We well, the Tuesday last week and this week was uh, three days a week. So we've got prime time on Monday at seven p.m. and then we got two right. morning shows on. Um, well, at the moment, two morning shows Tuesday and Wednesday. From next week, we are just on. So we've rescheduled ourselves. So we've got the prime time on the Monday evening, and then we've got, thankfully, just the Wednesday morning because. <laughs> Oh, it's a struggle game. I don't know how you do seven o'clock like conference calls at Hong Kong because like <laughs> I'd lose, I'd lose it. Life. I'd be half asleep. What do you mean, man? He walked to Paris, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To, to be fair, this guy's a super, superhuman man. You know what? That's what everyone says now. If, if, if I complain about anything, no, but you walked to Paris. You walked to Paris. Like, Come on, leave me alone, bro. Yeah. Leave me alone. But no, I just want to say, man, it's a very, very good vibe here, man. Uh, Thank you very much. Right. How long have you guys all known each other? For We've known while, each other actually. for a while and not for a while. So it, um, 
Johan, so, uh, me and Johan knew of each other earlier on about in school days. We weren't that close then. We became a bit more closer in the last three odd years. Mm. Um, yeah, with yeah. Ridwan and Shafi and myself, we met in university. Um, Crazy way how we met, ago. to be fair. Yeah, yeah. 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 two and a half years I didn't, ago. I didn't want to meet Ridwan. You didn't? You didn't <laughs> actually, to be fair, I, I'm going to say it now. We met via the Bengali Society. Yeah. So, uh, I think all, all of us so was I pleased. Met yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Atik was pleased that I joined the, uh, joined the society. Yeah. It was, it it was one of them where, me. you know, um, I, I, I had a, a, a set of officials already like in place, yeah. and I didn't want to, you know, too many cooks spoil the broth. And I didn't want one of those situations to happen. So when somebody, when Shafi came up and said, oh, there's a guy called Ridwan that wants to join the committee, I'm just like, nah, you know, not another person. But guess what? I did the flair in it. So, <laughs> yeah. you know what? <laughs> so, what can I say? It's one of the things that I don't regret in life. <laughs> Um, love, with me and Johan, actually, um, it's quite funny. I think we, yeah. we met. I was, in, I was in, in Madrasa, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. We met in Madrasa and part very, time. Yeah. Very briefly, though. It was like, um, probably we're talking about like 10 years ago now or something, isn't it? Yeah. And it was a um, while yeah, back now. yeah, we've probably spoke like maybe once or twice, known for a couple of months, and then it just disappeared. I disappeared, and then s- we're back together at university after yeah. like mm. so many years. And it's just yeah. mad to catch up. I don't know with with yourself, but obviously because you joined the ISAC society, you know, with societies in general, the networking is amazing. It is, it honestly. Is like, like, yeah. The 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 society I was was if it wasn't for the society, I wouldn't be with the network I am. Wouldn't be in the situation I am currently. Like, mm. I wouldn't be in a, a radio show with yourself because I would not have got in contact with Mohammed. I wouldn't be on the radio show. Yeah. So yeah. that's just come from a society. Exactly. So, many so the network there. opportunity from there is amazing, honestly. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I mean it's a different change yeah. from going we to uni. Hopefully, well. inshallah, bro. If everything goes well, we're gonna have our own podcast um, after Ramadan anyway, and we I would love bro. to have you have you as a guest at some point if if you would be willing to come and bless us with your presence uh, after the bro, lockdowns on, over, man. inshallah. And then Legit, man. All you, need, all you guys need to do is reach out, bro. Yeah, hundred no percent, man. Uh, I've liked all your stuff on Instagram. I've been stalking you, bro. These men were stalking from beforehand, and now I'm doing it as well. <laughs> yeah, he's in the studio. The reason why it's quiet, he's on Instagram. Um, <laughs> no, but it, yeah, it'd be it'd be lovely, uh, man. Wait, wait, before before thing, um, we we know a couple of mutuals, yeah, and I want to shout them out. So shout out Anaya and Tampi as well. Oh, oh yes, yeah, they're yeah. nice boys. Yes, the boys, the boys. Tampi from Luton and Anaya. Shout out Birmingham. Shout Birmingham. There we go. Yeah, but definitely we'll have you on the show, inshallah, and. Um, you know, we'll we'll try to organize some security for you. Inshallah. Obviously, coming to Birmingham after what he said. <laughs> 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 but um, no, I, I want to echo what uh, John said. Now we can we let you know like a week in advance, so you can walk here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Challenge set. Um, but echoing what I'll Johan need, said. I only need a day, bro. Come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mad, <laughs> mad. Um, since we started this show, we've had amazing caliber of guests, and you just add to that, um, Sakib. Uh, Sadik, Sadik, yeah, yeah right. Sadik. I'll yeah, get my guy's right. name all wrong and everything. Hello, Do you know what it is? His, sur- his surname baffled me. You want to say your surname out? What do you mean? What's wrong with my surname? Durasset, Durasset, isn't it? Du- what? Dorset. I thought you just said Durasset. 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 That is a right? beautiful name. What does Marshall. it mean? Uh, what, what's the meaning behind it? If you know. Uh, it means, you, you know, the explorer yeah. sat down. Mm-hmm. That's Dorasset. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, Dora the explorer sat down. <laughs> oh no! Do you know what? It's been amazing having you on the show. Um, inshallah, we'll keep in touch. As uh, you know, after the show, uh, when we get the recording, we'll blast it out to you as well. Um, but yeah, we're gonna carry on with the show, and inshallah, we can speak to you soon. But for now, uh, just quickly give us a sh- give give a shout out to where you're at on social media, and then where people can get you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's at what's record. Uh, on Twitter and Instagram and the podcast is at We Are G C Podcast. Make sure you give that a follow, lads. Definitely. Definitely. I I've 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 seen you were on with a, a Birmingham style Wazio. So I'm I'm waiting oh, for yeah, that one yeah. to come out, inshallah. Oh, to that one, yeah. you know, that's my guy, man. That's, that's your guy. guy. You guys are in Birmingham, yeah? Yeah, I know. Okay. Birmingham. He's got it all, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mashallah. Um but all yeah, right. it's amazing speaking to you and we'll catch you soon, yeah? Salaam alaikum. Alhamdulillah, that was uh, Spiderman. Sadiq. Man. Yeah, and um, you can get him on his so- uh, social media. Uh, At what's Ruku? Yeah. On Twitter and. Oh, I forgot uh, to ask him what Ruku was. Oh, but then again, yeah. he said his, uh, his surname's Dora the Explorer sat down, yeah. so, you know. I've actually got, got a good story in terms of meaning of the name. I think it's, it's quite interesting one to tell people. So, mine and my brother's name and my little sister's name. My mm. mom had this plan for some of my years. Okay. So, uh, my name and my brother's name is uh, Ridwan and Rayan. So if you know the meaning of that is a uh, doorkeeper to heaven. Right. So if you know that, and then my little sister's name is Jannat, mm. and I'm sure you like know what the uh, 
the meaning to that Jannah. name is yeah. Jannah. Jannah. Paradise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So my mom's done that. that that's you, not you, 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 you get what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we're the doorkeepers to my little sister, yeah. no. which oh. is... <laughs> I, don't, I wanted to share that because obviously it was a new yeah, one, yeah. but a lot of people find that quite interesting. I believe mine's a, uh, mine's a biblical name. Yeah, Johan. Johan. Yeah, Johan. Oh, well, yeah, well yeah. that's an Austrian name, Johan. Uh, Johan. Yeah. Austrian slash German. So a lot of people in school used to call me Johan and it used to <laughs> really, really <laughs> trigger me, man. Like, there's a J there, bro. <laughs> I put it there on purpose. <laughs> if I wanted to be called Johan, <laughs> I would have used the Y. <laughs> but then I found out um, it, was, it was like an Austrian thing. Oh. But the nearest Arabic meaning is Johan, which means hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hungry for success. Oh, yeah, oh, exactly. Mashallah, mashallah. Mashallah. Um, but yeah, that that the topic today was about work-life balance, mm. and you know, I think the sentiment behind what Ridwan said and what we all said mm. is having that passion in what you do. Hundred mm. percent. And I think that's something that we'll talk about when we speak about jobs. And I think you know, um, Sadiq could be a brilliant person with his mm. podcast. Or oh, that university um, job transition as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because obviously, a lot of people come to the end of university and realize that's not what I want to do anymore. Yeah. But um, having, yeah, no, having I was talking about what we were speaking about last time, mm-hmm. where you know the f- the journey I've had, as opposed to the journey you've had, mm. yeah, and how that ties into everything. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting. I mean, obviously, t- today we won't have enough time to get into that yeah. as as d- deeply as we would like to. But hopefully, inshallah, at some point next week, we will be talking about that, guys. Because um, just to give you guys a brief catch up. Um, based on obviously if you, you guys weren't listening last week um, three of the guys in the studio have had the traditional uh, career sort of path where they've gone to school they've then gone to college then university and then alhamdulillah now they're in their respective fields working whereas I've had a completely opposite where I finished college I started work uh, in industry uh, and I did that for a couple of years and now I've gone back to university so we were discussing the differences between the two journeys and and uh, how it has impacted us mentally and in our careers. So, I mean, obviously that's something we would like to speak about next week, inshallah. inshallah. So tune inshallah. in, guys. Yeah. Uh, it'll be either, it'll be Wednesday morning, inshallah. So tune in for that. Um, but yeah, uh, work-life balance, man. I, I don't think there's a better better person to talk about that um, uh, and elaborate on it than people like Ridwan and Sadiq that just gave us some really good insights on that. Um, hopefully we can we can keep that and hopefully the listeners have um, benefited from this particular discussion yeah. mm. do you know what I mean I think as well like sp- just um, we spoke a lot about the um, the younger generation in terms of work and in Ramadan as well but mm. I think we should also pay our respects to our parents as well that oh 100%, 100% man hats off to them well. hats off to them because after them. they work in Ramadan they've got family to provide for do you know what I mm. mean 100%. and then also after they do the shopping and everything like that as well Absolutely. while we in school and what not we are and where we so are because yeah, of our parents' of course, sacrifices, yeah, so we man. Give a great thank you to our I parents don't know about well. you guys, right? Like, this is the first time in, I believe, 16 or 17 odd years, mm. I have my father at home with me in Ramadan. Oh, sure. So I'm actually very gra- oh, grateful sure. to Allah mm. because of the lockdown. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. if there was no lockdown, my dad would have to be at work as mm. usual, you know, route. Because I have a small family as of well, course, you see. Yeah. I don't have siblings. Mm. So when my dad's not there, it's just me and my mom having mm. iftar. And if I'm doing iftar out with some friends or whatever it may mm. be, She's on her own. Mm. So the first time ever, it's just so ha- nice to see my mum mm. and my dad doing iftar together at the table and I'm there. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's just a big blessing, man. And I'm, I'm, re- I'm really happy about that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so I guess there is a silver lining. Uh, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is <laughs> what it is. Time, isn't it? Yeah. So ha- 100% shout out to everybody's parents mm. and their sacrifices and they're doing what they do because obviously, Alhamdulillah, you know, Allah has blessed us with with. Um, what would you say, like the nine to five typical office mm. jobs and whatnot, mm. right? They would have been in our respective careers, but they are mm-hmm. the ones that grafted, you know, mm. restaurants and factories and taxis and whatever it may be. They have done all the sacrifices and and paved the path for people like me and you, so we can have the life that we have. Exactly. And um, so yeah, Alhamdulillah, big up our parents, mm. big up mom and dad, and everybody's mom and dad in this room, and everybody that's listening. Big up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Ridwan, would you like to would you like to share a few more things before before we get off air? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. Um, I think one thing, guys, uh, and we need to take note of is, even though some people might be working, uh, <coughs> it's just to keep up with the duties of Ramadan. Mm. So praying, keeping up with, uh, trying to pre- uh, re- read Quran, trying to learn during Ramadan as well, because everyone's got that time now to to learn. Mm. So either that be a skill in just general, or something you're interested in, or just learning something in terms of Islam. I think learning is is the most powerful tool you can have in Ramadan right now, and uh, education always stays with you. So keeping yourself occupied in that sense, um, and I think 
Ramadan is like a almost like a perfect excuse to do all those things, isn't it? it? Definitely. I mean, we, when I was talking to uh, Sadiq about time during Ramadan, it's, there's a lot more barakah in it. Hundred percent. You're right. So you're you've, right. I, if you can feel more productive in Ramadan, that's going to make you so much feel so much more better. Hundred mm. percent. Definitely. So I think that's something everyone needs to take note and do do try to do uh, in Ramadan. Yeah. I think one thing Zaf mentioned yesterday uh, when he was on here as a guest, what that that hit me quite hard is that. You know, we try to uh, find that, that um, what do you call it? We try to trick ourselves. Like, if I sleep majority of the day yeah. and I wake up late, mm-hmm. and then, and, you know, I, I can cheat the system almost, mm. right? But, but you're not getting much out of Ramadan then. Mm. Your Ramadan is just going to fly by. Mm. You, you haven't done much. And who are you cheating, really? You know, <laughs> like it's, like yeah. it's, it's not like Ramadan needs us or God needs us. Mm. We need yeah. we mm. need this month. It's yeah. a beloved month. Mm. So many people, in fact, I was watching on Instagram, somebody posted and they, they were like, so many people haven't made it to Ramadan that uh, passed away yeah, just yeah. before Ramadan. Yeah. Yeah. So many people are going to pass away in Ramadan that we'll never see next Ramadan. So we should be grateful for all the Ramadans that Allah is blessing us with consistently. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. For the past 25 years, Allah has blessed me with Ramadans after Ramadans after Ramadans, right? Mm-hmm. Who knows if I'm going to see the next one? Who knows if I'm going to see the end of it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if the more you're sleeping in and the more you're missing out on your salahs and your Quran, and even if it, you know, like, who spoke about Ramadan Muslims uh, on, on the show a couple of weeks? Was it last week? Was it you, Riban, or Atiko? Ramadan Muslims. When we were talking about oh, yeah, Ramadan yeah. Muslims and how people uh, start becoming yeah, yeah, more yeah. practicing, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did. I think you are on about a live that we had that we spoke about more detail. About oh, Ramadan I think Muslims. I think it was. But I think yeah. I'm, I'm sure we spoke about that we briefly. Just about anyway, yeah. the reason I mentioned that is even if you are a Ramadan Muslim, for argument's sake, at least make the most of that. Yeah, if yeah. you're not doing something 11 months of the year and you are doing something mm. this one month, Alhamdulillah, man. Good on you. Good on you. It's 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 a fantastic start. It's a fantastic place to be. So I just hope everybody makes the most of their Ramadan. And we still got what about roughly 17, 17 18 days, days left, yeah, yeah. roughly. Um, uh, let's make the most it? of it. Thirteen days gone. Subhanallah, like man. For me, it feels like it's flown man. by, guys. I don't know how you guys yeah, are feeling about it. Yeah. Definitely. It's just been crazy, man. It's just it's just flown. Honestly, honestly, I've never had a Ramadan which has flown by this quickly. I think about it as well. It's just like we're emotional. What are we doing? Yeah, exactly. We do. I mean, you're working, but like yeah, for yeah, those yeah. of us not working, um, I we get to wake up whatever time we mm. do, um, you know, appropriate time, whatnot. But yeah. even then, it just flies by. I mean, for yourself, Shafi, if it wasn't for yeah. lockdown, what would you be doing right now? If it wasn't for lockdown, yeah. So if you oh, so was no yeah. more pre, so pre I, lockdown, mm. so what I would say, so was, yeah. So obviously, I just started working in September, right? Yeah. And um, Alhamdulillah, I do like my job and whatnot. Um, it's a nice environment. Like yeah. You work people. in the stage, uh, um, estate agency. agency field, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I work specifically for student accommodation. Right. Okay. Retreat. So what it is, uh, yeah, I like my job. Uh, you guys know that. And um, I was looking forward to this Ramadan actually because um, I, li- I like to keep myself active, as, y- as you guys know, mm. and um, to think that um, I wanted to experience what working a nine to five would actually be like yeah, during, Ramadan. during Ramadan because yeah, yeah, yeah. I never actually had that before to of be honest course. it's not pleasant <laughs> I mean like yeah so I wanted to I just wanted to um, <laughs> experience it for myself <laughs> yeah. and to see what it was like obviously waking up in the morning is going to be a struggle but I think uh, you can get used to that do you know what I mean uh, mm. yeah. so I would have been doing that whatnot, not and um, but yeah I mean, I mean that didn't happen do you think so do you know your company that you work with is, it's yeah. a small company isn't it it's a small company so yeah. do you think they will be able to cater for yourself for in terms of Ramadan of course, yeah. I mean, so um, if you told them, and so, yeah, I'm yeah. not sure there's other Muslims there, is, are there? No, no, it's just myself that's working okay, there at the moment. So uh, we, we have like only staff of 10, but okay. Alhamdulillah, they're very uh, successful and whatnot. So and they, they would be able to cater would, you? Uh, they would be, yeah. I mean, if I wanted to have a late, um, later start, maybe half an hour later start, mm-hmm. whatnot, because obviously in, in um, during my lunchtime, I, w- I wouldn't really be going out to um, eat or anything like that, so I'd probably stay in the office or something, so I could come out half an hour late, yeah. how, um, or even an hour late or something like that. And um, to be honest, I'll start at half nine, so uh, there's no rush hour or anything like of that. Course, yeah. And um, it's a yeah, pretty a much nice, nice, yeah. Yeah, nice time to start. Mm-hmm. But then you can to Coventry, don't you? Yeah, it takes me half an hour, yeah. so it's all right, to be honest. You know, I drive an RS3. Inshallah. Inshallah, one day. But yeah, draw, drawing the topic to a close, I think um, the title that we gave it is uh, the work-life balance. It was mm. slightly clickbait. Mm. And the reason why I say it's slightly clickbait is, uh, you know, I hope it became apparent from what you heard from Sadiq and Ridwan and all of us here. But, um, and even the shows before, like yesterday, when we were speaking to Zaf, is that, you know, you don't really need to find a balance in Ramadan because because of the barakah like Ridwan and Sadiq were talking about, Ramadan gives you the time. Mm. And Ramadan mm. gives you the energy. We're fasting, but it doesn't take away from our energy you know we might be hungry in the stomach here and there but like Zaf said he pulled out his whole ceiling yesterday and he was doing deliveries and all of that and he had all the energy Ridwan say in the morning and then he goes for an 8 hour shift after he's got the energy um, 
you know, I go home and I start doing my editing stuff. The energy's there, mm. and you know, right through till Fajr, and then we sleep for a bit, and then we have energy again. You know, we feel a bit, you know, bummy in the morning, but it's all there. It's and all there, I, I, yeah. well, I mean, once you stepped into it, mm-hmm. you're good to go. Yeah. I mean, just if Zaf is listening today, I did some stretches this morning, and I actually mm. felt amazing. Honestly, <laughs> it woke me up instantly. I did about five minutes. I was it was your basic yeah. PE stretches you learn yeah. in school. But it helped a lot. So, guys, I recommend you do that as well. If, if our listeners don't take anything from it, at least we take something yeah, from it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. definitely. Um, guys, before we go, I got a question for you guys. On our first show, we... Uh, it's brief anyway. On our first show, um, we discussed our Ramadan targets. Yeah. And personal targets, what we aim to achieve in our Ramadans and whatever. Briefly, can you guys let me know, 13 days in, how's that going for you guys? For me, um, I was just on messages to a friend of mine who, who was like, oh, 13 days, I've got some catching up to do. And I basically replied saying, I've got a bit more catching up to do than you have. <laughs> and with a crying emoji. So I, I'm a bit behind. Um, but inshallah, we free up a bit more time after today to catch up. So I'll hopefully catch up. I mean, myself, um, what can I say? I'm, I'm pretty much uh, busy, busy, busy. I hate to set your schedule. So mm-hmm. I haven't done much towards it. But inshallah, as time goes on, more time I get. I'll improve. Mm-hmm. And for myself, oh, I was I was going to say it quite a bit, but obviously we're going to be running out of time. So um, I'll have to get on with you uh, next week and see how we get on. No, tell us. <laughs> you got a minute? Oh, a minute. Well, uh, 13 days in, right? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, I've been doing a lot more Quran reading. Um, sure, sure. You know, coming out, coming out to the radio show mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And Joe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, yep. <laughs> <laughs> did you go for your run yesterday? I did. Oh, okay, yeah. mashallah. You know, alhamdulillah, I'm so happy. I know we got very, like, a couple of seconds left, but yeah. I'm very happy mm-hmm. yeah. that I've been managing to st- stick to everything that I plan to. Yeah. And I just hope and pray that all mm-hmm. Allah grants us all consistency Ameen. until the end of Ramadan Ameen. and beyond, inshallah. Ameen. 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 And that's the dua for all of us. Ameen. Um, so we are off until Monday evening now and next week, as we mentioned, the schedule changes. So keep an eye out on our Instagram, Better Together Show. Um, and until next week, I'm running out of time, so I'm just going to bid you farewell and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.